Thanks, Deputy Speaker. And I also acknowledge those on the opposite side and on our side who have served. It is an amazing thing that you, you have done and your service isn't forgotten. I have Richmond and Glenbrook RAF bases in my electorate and there's hardly a visit there where the issue of veteran suicide doesn't come up. Cautiously, people have shared with me their insights into the mental health challenges of mates during and after service. I've also got many former defence personnel living in the electorate or their parents or partners. They're from Army, Navy and Air Force, and they talk to me about what they see their child or their partner, their husband or wife go through. And they sometimes try to describe for me their own experience of making the transition from the Defence Force to the civilian world. I'll never forget one young man who brought me the paperwork for his DVA claim. It was three folders deep, his so far unsuccessful DVA claim. And this was a man struggling with mental illness and battling to be able to establish a new post-defence life. And yet he was expected to work through stacks of paperwork. Given what I know about mental illness and what I've seen, I was just horrified at what people were being asked to do. That has to change. Where I've had the greatest insight, though, into the challenges that Defence Force personnel face when they leave the military is from my two attachments as part of the Australian Defence Force Parliamentary Program one to the RAF base Ambly and the other last year to Iraq in the Middle East operations. I was only part of Camp Taji in the Middle East base for a week or so, uh, but I got a glimpse into the way defence wraps itself around you. You train together, you laugh at work, work health and safety PowerPoints together while still heeding the message of what to do or not to do if you're injured. You eat together, you exercise together, the little free time you have is spent together. And the people you are with become like your family for that time. Your own family feels a really long way away. And even I felt a disconnect as I got wrapped up in the single focus that the operation has, learning new things and working to be part of a team, albeit, in my case, a very temporary one. I can see that when this is for real, when this is the life you've chosen for years, there's no time to daydream. People's lives really are at stake. This is a place, there's a place for everyone in defence and everyone knows their role and works as a team. What my time with defence did for me was crystallise the understanding of why it's so hard to transition from defence to civilian life for some people. Between 2001 and 2017, 419 serving and ex-serving ADF personnel died by suicide. But while the suicide rate for men still serving was 48 per cent lower than the general population, the rate is 18 per cent higher for those who'd left the military. For women, it's similar. There's no question that we must do better than this. Researchers have found that while the camaraderie, discipline and respect can make the military life-changing for someone, the sudden end to it can be lethal. I was moved by a quote from the research of Kelly Toole of Adelaide University and Elaine Waddle of Flinders University, who were told by one veteran, I actually went back and asked if I could mow the lawns for free, just so I could still be around them. They wouldn't allow it. As the researchers wrote in their article in the conversation, if ex-servicemen and women could maintain contact with the ADF through peer support and informal networks, their identity and sense of purpose could be maintained. I hope we see some innovative approaches to supporting ex-services men and women. The new Independent National Commissioner for Defence and Veteran Suicide is a start. But of course, we would have liked to have seen a full Royal Commission with the full powers of a Royal Commission, as was called by, for by the family of Jesse Bird. The inquest into his tragic death was scathing and found significant systemic failures in the Department of Veterans Affairs' treatment of Jesse before he took his own life. The report found that DVA had acted contrary to its own policy and legislation and that it handled Jesse's permanent impairment claim without compassion or empathy. That is an indictment, a sad reality that cannot be repeated. Now, the jury's out on whether the, the steps that the government's taken will be enough, but the new veteran mental health and wellbeing strategy hopefully will go some way in and prove some effectiveness. 
but we do need to be creative. We need to look at how we support family and friends, how we help people understand the transportability of the skills that defence personnel have. There's so much we can do. We want to do it with the government.